Hey guys, Phil Blair here, Gilmore Song Range University lead instructor. I'm out here just doing some uh, shooting on the range and it's been a while since I did a video, so I figured I'd just share a quick video with you guys. Um, a common trend that I'm seeing with my students uh, this season at uh, Long Range University is um, uh, relying too much on the rear bag uh, to support the shooting position. All right, and that kind of just stems from uh, not understanding uh, a good shooter's checklist um, to be able to interface with that rifle. Uh, so what I like to do personally is when I'm building a uh, shooting position, right, uh, is, is without the aid of any kind of rear bag, right? So here I've got a, a pint size game changer, which I love, right? But again, again, what I'm seeing with some of my students this year is a lot of them are relying so much on that to support the back of the rifle that when they build their shooting position, they tend to scoop into that rifle, all right, just like those, with just like that without any having any kind of purchase of the rifle whatsoever. So if I took that bag away from them, right, what you'll think you'll notice is that rifle is going to want to dip underneath uh, their placement of where that rifle's at, okay? So take the bag out of the equation. If I didn't have that bag there, or how I tend to build my shooting positions is I'm going to bring that rifle up, right, as high and medial as possible. And one thing I wanna show you guys, change the angle here. Is when I get that initial purchase of that rifle, that barrel dips down, right? I'm on the um, high A frame of my elbows here, so that now as I push out of my elbows and level out, it gives me a good load into my bipods, right? So at this point, I've got complete control of the rifle and just the medial portion of my clavicle. One more time, right? I'm gonna bring that rifle up as high and medial as possible, right? Again, I call this building a bridge because what happens is I nose dive that barrel so that I have complete, get complete control of that rifle interfacing with my shoulder, right? Again, I've got complete control of the rifle like this. And if I want, I can shoot like this. Get a target at 525 yards. 12 inch plate. Right, impact. I come back on target. All right, so even with this, I'm still able to manage recoil because that recoil is coming straight back into me, right? I'm not hopping off to the left where a right-handed shooter will have a tendency to do, right? Because of the amount of pressure he's putting down on the buttstock, right? Into the bag. But now, because I want a little bit of extra stability, I'm gonna move the camera again. I'm gonna bring the bag as support here. So still build my shooting position the same. Dip that barrel, sink in, locate my target, and then now use the bag as support, still maintaining integrity of making sure that I have contact with the buttstock with my non-shooting hand. Check my cant. All right, came back on target all three times. And I was going to keep that reticle uh, wobble very minimal uh, with using the bag as rear support. So um, hopefully you guys liked the video. Uh, it's been a while since I produced some content, guys. It's been a busy summer. Um, but hopefully you guys uh, like what I've been putting out this year. And uh, yeah. All right, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget, keep your face on the gun. Thanks, guys. Hey guys, uh, round two. We got a lot of questions about what if I wasn't on a shooting mat, if I was on concrete just like this, on some kind of slippery surface, how I would load the bipods, All right? Um, so still build my bridge as necessary, right? Because uh, consistency breeds accuracy, right? But as I level out, obviously because I can't put weight because it's slipping forward, I'm pulling with my shooting hand back 
into my shoulder, right? Not enough to where I'm causing strain in my bicep, right? Uh, or any kind of muscle tension. I'm gonna use a smaller bag this time because with my non-shooting hand, because as I run my bolt forward, it's gonna wanna put that rifle outside of the pocket, all right? So I need to maintain control of the buttstock with my non-shooting hand. So I'm gonna use this smaller bag, right? Here, and I'm gonna pan the three different targets because I find it easier with smaller bags to manipulate the back of the buttstock, right? But just wanna show you how the rifle recoils and tracks, right? On the concrete surface with uh, these talon uh, bipod feet, right? So, fill my bridge, come down. Last target was at 635, first two targets were about 530, so I used the same dope. The last one was uh, about a uh, three and a half minute holdover, but uh, rifle track straight back. I was able to observe my impacts, right, um, on this uh, concrete slippery surface, right? So it's all about understanding that under recoil, that rifle needs to come straight back, right? So I'm gonna take up as much of that slack as possible by not pulling the rifle back into me, okay, rather than shifting the load onto the bipods. Thanks guys, keep your face on the gun.